Welcome to mid-October, and with that comes the Halloween spirit. I've got four spooky themed videos prepped for this half month, but today we're beginning with a real horror movie, and that is with Aardman's Chicken Run. Endlessly British and undeniably horrifying. This movie legitimately traumatized me as a kid. A chicken is legit decapitated in this film. I never watched it all the way through in my childhood. I avoided it, because it was just too damn scary. I don't know how well known Aardman movies are to the general population, so allow me to open up some of the rabbit hole that is British animation and chicken run. Releasing in June 2000, I was only a wee babber at three years old when this came out. Ripe for baby's first concentration camp. Cause look at this! Is this not essentially exactly that? Now when coming to think of the scene that changed Chicken Run, I first thought to myself, boy I gotta actually watch this movie. And then after that point, realizing I had no clue on like 60% of the scenes, I saw a few good options. There's the moment the chickens loosen up and dance the night away. The tense scene where you think a chicken's about to be plucked before the farmers change their whole business premise. The action sequence that takes place within the new pie making machine, or the entire sequence of the flying cabin escape plan. But no, these scenes are good, some of them even elevating the film's status. But you know what scene really changed Chicken Run? that really had an impact in a way no other scene in this movie did. It's the one that has the decapitation in it, damn it! So this spooky season, we're going back to the core of my childhood nightmares with the scene that somehow didn't turn me vegan. We begin seven minutes into the movie. Jesus Christ, this scene starts seven minutes in. We British are hardcore about our dark themes. Our protagonist Ginger has just been kicked into the grounds this morning, as has essentially become a routine since she keeps attempting to escape. Perhaps I was in solitary confinement. Jesus, this movie introduced me to solitary confinement at three. Anyway, what really kicks off the scene is... The bell to all line up. Or as the posh military rooster character Fowler would say... Roll call! My goodness, this movie is so British. And so everyone scurries into place, camera low down to their feet in the classic way to highlight their feet scattering in every which way before changing to aim up a little so you see more of the expressions. Everyone frantic and that one guy staring at the camera as we see Fowler commanding evermore. Discipline, order! I'm back in my REF day oh. from the- As we meet another main character, Bunty. Big, loud, and brutish. Happy to bump others for their own ways. This scene also acts as a way to meet some of our characters for the first time, hence the extra emphasis on it all. Anyway, she's opening up a space for our ginger as they find their place. Tally ho! Tucks away! Keep over, you old fool. They just want to count us. They're so British. Interestingly, they're intentionally hamming it all up. Arman at this stage wanted to make it known that they were a British animation studio, so they've gone out of their way to bring in British idioms like give over, as well as ring out some accents that are less prevalent on screens in the day. Northern accents, what a shocker. Plus a Scottish one we'll see here in a bit. This movie was the first as part of a deal between Aardman and DreamWorks, hence why they wanted to push for the British representation, for the new American audience this could reach. Why, back in my RFJ's Oh, they're coming back in line. All oh, right, my... And now that horror seeps in under the surface. Mr. Authority this whole time is in fact just another one of the coop and falls in line like everyone else. A light-hearted little gag with a real sense of terror on his face at the end, as our farming lady makes her evil appearance. We only see her feet at first, happy to get a little dirty. And it kind of freaks me out how synchronous all the chickens are and how rigid they are when giving attention. Anyway, it's far from over from here. She steps in, still feet first, as we slowly reveal more and more of her stature. Gloomy colors facing away from the camera and a suspicious shape in her hand. But also, the camera does a wonderful little focus pull to focus out onto the chickens. There's actually a handful of really inventive and brain-bending shots in this movie that is a genuine marvel to see. Stop motion animation is just mind-boggling when done well. And it certainly hits hard on the horror film. Chicken Run is a horror film, okay? Welcome back, kid. Is there a new plan? And there's the Scotsman, asking for the next escape plan. Coming in for a little bit of lightheartedness in between the severity of it all. I don't feel like it's enough for me, but hey, look at how clueless the one on the right looks. <laughs> and 
there she stands, looking like a pencil neck version of Miss Trunchbull from Matilda. Absolutely horrifying in character design, and of course, shown at the most dominating angle, practically from the chicken's perspective. The only thing putting a smile on her face is the stretching of her glove. Very heavy handedly symbolic of a chicken's. hair? Ruffle thing? Oh, comb! It's called a comb. Glove looks like a chicken's comb. I thought we tried going under. Ah. Over. Right. Ah ha ha! Laugh away the fear, kids! Teehees make the tears go away! And now we come right back to the stakes. We see a hint of what the farmer is looking out for, and now she's back on path to come to someone we know. She may be far away from the camera, but she's gonna start stepping closer agonizingly slowly. And we see the chickens look on in horror from between Mrs. Tweedy's big black boots, essentially chopping them like scissors with every step as we learn that it's eggs they lay and eggs they're farming. The farmer poking through the egg production record only to stop at... The music as well coming in here as it builds up only to drop back to these guitar picks as Mrs. Tweedy reads Edwina's poor report, showcasing her being looked down upon as she loses all power in the moment and is soon to be murdered and eaten. I'm just glad it's not me. Of course, three-year-old me is still freaking out on the inside because I have to watch this thing. And Mrs. Tweedy is loving it. Look at her jolly smile. And since you're halfway, consider subscribing, or check out our new approach to Twitter. Only there will you see banger tweets like this one I've yet to send out. And so, as the other chickens murmur about how they could have helped, she swiped away. You didn't tell anyone. The last shot you see of her face is one of her looking up in fear as the camera looms ever closer to her, her head shaking in terror. I also thought I caught a tear under her eye, but I think there's actually two frames where there's like a sparkle along the edge of her skin and beak. Wonder if that's an animation error or a very hidden tear. Either way, after this point, half the time Edwina is shown as nothing more than a dangling pair of legs, lifelessly swinging around before reaching their lifeless fate. And in the same shot that the farmers walk past, we come closer to the chickens for one final comment. Oh, is Edwina off on holiday? Ha <laughs> Why haven't the chickens in the cinema stopped screaming yet? They just told a joke! <laughs> but it doesn't end there, as this kid's movie wants to show the whole shebang. Here's the farmers carrying Edwina to the death house, and Mrs. Tweedy putting on those gloves in their classic ominous way, intending to do harm. Plus, she'd never touch a chicken with her bare hands like her husband does. Gross. And for us to see the next event, we need an explanation. And that comes in the form of Ginger going out of her way to witness it. They trade hands, and then we get to witness... A hanging pair of legs really brings the whole shot composition together there. This wasn't even the shot engraved into my mind, but bloody well could have been. This is horrifying. Those legs are horrifying. This whole movie was too much for a three-year-old child. Mother! And so Ginger continues to follow however she can, now choosing to climb atop the roof of one of the huts to peer from above, giving her the rare spectacle no one else bothers to explore, or has the stomach to. Mrs. Tweedy grabs the axe and pulls it off frame as the camera lifts up to the shadow on the wall. They can't physically show a chicken being decapitated, but they can imply it in shocking detail. You see Edwina brutally pushed down to the pedestal, so intense her entire legs go up like that. As Tweedy's figure readies the blade, lifts up, and... My goodness, our angle didn't change from Ginger's new rooftop view, so that means she saw something else to us. She probably got to see the actual hidden aftermath of the whole thing. Christ! No wonder she was holding her neck in suspense. Everyone else was just minding their own business, yet unable to block out the sound of their peer dying in a moment. Why did I watch this so young? And so, depressed on their latest loss, Ginger turns around on her roof to sit down. And this shot here will also haunt my dreams. Just a simple shot of a claymation chicken with tears in its eyes as it's staring hauntingly into nothingness. There is so much raw emotion and despair in this shot. And then from above she hears... A 
A symbol of freedom. Free birds flying in the open air, vastly above their little prison, and out to the great unknown. A simple desire that is just not the reality for this collection of hens. As we see as the camera moves further down to show the industrial nature of the oppressive buildings around here. Rows and rows of the same hut, a couple of chickens playing chess and... Is that a watchtower over there? What kind of chicken farm needs a watchtower? This is 100% a camp allegory and my people brain cannot handle it! This is intense for the first 10 minutes. You've got to get out of here. But it stands as the foundation to kick off the drive of all of our characters. And of course Ginger, who uses this as the stepping stone to push so hard to escape. It's all been premise building to showcase the stakes and show that the evil characters really are evil. Even if three of them technically aren't too bad. And it's the very thing that jumps Ginger into action not moments later. Spread the word, Mac. Meeting tonight in Hut 17. And from there, it's a series of escaping hijinks, a spanner in the works, a montage of hope, a reveal of despair, a battle in between, and of course, the big bombastic finale. But whilst the film in general is a bloody good one, by far at least in my experience, this is the scene that changed Chicken Run. It made it clear just how intense the stakes were in this movie, and suddenly made you take it a lot more seriously. I just wish maybe I could have watched it a couple years later the first time, and not spend 22 more years avoiding it. Happy Halloween season, folks. For now, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit. Come on, Chicken Run's a horror movie, right?